At the top, you see your identifying information, your name, student number, and so on. Then you see the course name and teacher for each of your classes. The first column has your first quarter grades. These are the same grades that you saw on your first report card. Next are your second quarter grades. These are the grades that you earned in your courses from October to December. The S1E column has your exam grades. These are the grades that you earned on your semester exams the last week of December. Finally, you will see a column for your semester grades. We will talk in more detail about how this average is calculated in just a minute. The semester grade is the only grade that will appear on your transcript and be calculated in your GPA. The quarter and exam grades do not appear on your transcript. Note too that EOC courses do not award semester grades. If you're taking an EOC course, you will not find a grade in the S1 column. Instead, you will earn a final grade for these courses at the end of the year. In the boxes in the middle of your report card, you will see your first quarter GPA, second quarter GPA, and semester average. These numbers can help you see the trend of your grades. Were your grades higher or lower second quarter? However, other than seeing this trend, you will not use these numbers. They will not be used to determine graduation status. When you are thinking about graduation or college admission, you want to look at your cumulative GPA, which can be found in the box to the bottom left of your report card. So now let's look at how your semester and final grades are calculated. For non-EOC courses, each semester is divided into two nine-week grading periods and a semester exam. The two nine-week grades each make up 40% of the semester average. The exam is 20% of the semester average. For these courses, one half credit is earned for each class each semester. The cumulative GPA is recalculated at the end of each semester, including these grades. For EOC courses, you will only receive a final grade at the end of the year. This final grade is made up of your four nine weeks grades, your first semester exam grade, and your EOC grade. These courses are not calculated in your GPA until the final grade is determined at the end of the year. Now let's look at your GPA in more detail. GPA is calculated by converting each of your semester and final grades to points. Then we determine the average by dividing the total number of grade points earned by the total number of credits attempted. You can see the scales used to award points listed here. For your unweighted GPA, all grades are awarded points based on the four-point grade scale, where an A is given four points, a B three, and so on. When calculating your Weighted Honors Point Average, or HPA, regular level classes continue to award points on the four-point scale. However, honors level courses are awarded points on a 4.5 scale, where an A is given 4.5 points, a B 3.375, and so on. AP, ACE, and dual enrollment courses are on a six-point scale. An A is worth six points, a B is worth 4.5 points, and so on. Again, to determine your GPA, the total number of points is divided by the total number of courses taken. Let's look at a few examples. Here is a student who has taken all regular classes this semester. Using the four-point scale, we convert each letter grade to points. Then we add the points together. In this case, the student has earned 20 points in seven classes. When we divide 20 by seven, we get the GPA of 2.8571. Because all of these classes are regular level courses, the GPA and the HPA are the same. In this example, the student here is taking courses at the regular honors and AP ACE levels. To calculate their unweighted GPA, all grades are converted to points using the four point scale. However, when we are calculating their HPA, we use the weighted scale. So the A that they earned in the AP ACE English is given six points. The A that they earned in Science Honors is given 4.5 points. 
Again, the points are totaled together and divided by the total number of classes. For the GPA, this student earned 24 points. When divided by 7, this student's GPA is 3.4286. For the weighted HPA, they earned 27.25 points, which when divided by 7 gives them an HPA of 3.8929. Again, the grades that are used in your GPA are your first semester, second semester, and final grades. Also, remember you don't want to be too concerned with the averages found in the shaded box of the report card. You are mostly concerned with your cumulative GPA, which includes all of your semester and final grades from all of your high school credit courses taken, whether in middle or high school. The cumulative GPA is found in the box in the bottom left corner of your report card. You need at least a 2.0 GPA to be on track for graduation. If you earned a D or an F for your semester or final grade in one of your courses, you may be eligible for grade forgiveness. Keep in mind that grade forgiveness only applies to semester or final grades and not to nine week or exam grades. If you have earned a D or an F, you can retake the course. And if you earn a C or higher the second time, your original grade will no longer be used in the calculation of your GPA. It is important to note that the initial D or F will remain a part of your academic history. While a forgiven class is excluded from your high school GPA, some universities calculate GPA based on all courses attempted. If you are interested in grade forgiveness, or you earned an F in a course required for graduation, there are two ways for you to retake the course. You can choose to add it to your schedule for next school year. You can sign up for the course on your course selection sheet. Another option is to take the course through FLVS. The sooner that you make up the credit, the better it is for you. You want to get back on track for graduation as soon as possible.